the sun's high temperature produces light of every wavelength and by definition the production of light by materials at high temperature is called incandescence. The key is going to be high temperature, which of course is going to be most of the light that we know of. The light that comes from sunlight is from high temperature. The sun really produces almost all of the incandescence that we see. But it's not the only source of incandescence. We as humans have figured out way to make light of a high temperature. We've got fire. We know about electricity now. But there are some other ways that we make light without as much temperature. Many organisms actually produce their own visible light. And you can see some of them down here. But before we get to that term, let's go with the term luminescence. Luminescence is the production of light without the high temperatures needed for incandescence. So the difference here is going to be temperature. Most of the light we see comes from stuff that's very hot, like the sun, but then you have some things that produce its own light, and it doesn't have such a high temperature. Found this online. I believe this is like a paint, which produces its kind of a neon glow. So uh, that's not necessarily terribly hot whenever you have something like this, uh, which of course leads us to bioluminescence. Luminescence, you know, means producing its own light that's not very hot, but bio, of course, means life. So you probably have pieced two and two, put two and two together. You see that bioluminescence is the production of light by living organisms. You have lightning bugs, jellyfish, anglerfish. They all utilize chemical reactions in their body to produce luminescence. So it's a chemical reaction in their body that produces this. And since it is luminescent in the first place, it's not going to burn up the little jellyfish or burn up the, the uh, lightning bug or, and so on. Let's go to another slide. For a long time, the efficiency of these lightning bugs and jellyfish and anglerfish and other animals has been envied by researchers. Now, how it's been envied is that these are very highly efficient ways of getting light. There is almost none of this light that's lost to heat. And you know it's a good thing because you don't have overheating of the jellyfish or overheating of the other animals. So researchers try to emulate the light, the luminescent light that comes from these animals. And really the most efficient they have come up with has been an LED. LED are light emitting diodes. And they look like this. Here are three color LEDs and they're very efficient and they lose very little heat. You could touch these uh, even after a long time of, uh, of use and they would still not be very hot if any, not be very hot at all. An ordinary light bulb, speaking of light bulbs, an ordinary light bulb is a sealed tube with a thin tungsten wire running through it. And you can see the tungsten wire coming up through here and up through here. And you got the filament right here and so on. And the filament, of course, has tungsten in it also. You may remember, or I can't remember if you've had this yet or not. But anyway, the filament is going to act as a resistor as you are, as it's going through there. But, and these were used for many, many years. These bulbs are incandescent. They are incandescent, which means that it does produce a lot of heat. And if you've ever touched a normal light bulb whenever it is going, you know it's going to have some heat to it. It's not the heat of the sun, but you can feel the heat coming from it. Now, of course, the problem is that the filament, the tungsten filament here, sometimes tends to break with the heat. And anytime this filament breaks, it's going to close the circuit, 
and the bulb is useless. You have to throw it out and, and replace it with another one. So that brings us to the halogen bulb. Since the 1980s, halogen bulbs have been in existence. Now, we still use some incandescent regular old light bulbs, but there are more and more halogen bulbs on the market than there used to be. Halogen bulbs are still incandescent. They are still incandescent, but they don't burn out as easily. So the advantage is that they don't burn out as easily, not the fact that they're different from incandescent, because they are. They do come from a hot light source, but they just don't burn out as easily. You can take a look at the filament here. You can see that the filament is a little bit different, and I suspect this filament is a little sturdier, a little sturdier than the filament that happened to be in the, the normal light bulb there. These bulbs are made of quartz, and they have a halogen gas mixture inside them. A, that's where the halogen comes from. It's a gas mixture inside them instead of just normal old everyday light, which or normal or everyday air, which happens to be in these light bulbs. So they are a little bit different. That brings us to fluorescent light bulbs. Now you probably have seen these. They probably are in your classrooms right now. These fluorescent light bulbs that are uh, these nice long light bulbs here. Now let me tell you a little bit about them. They are not filled with halogen gas or yeah, some kind of halogen gas. They are filled with mercury vapor and some other gases. And they give off UV light when an electric current is passed through them. So they give off ultraviolet light. Fluorescent lights absorb the electromagnetic radiation of one wavelength and then give it off of another wavelength. And the insides of these bulbs are coated with a powder called phosphor. A powder called phosphor. I don't have my tablet with me right now, but I will try to write it out. Write it out. Phosphor. That's supposed to be an S. But anyway, that is the little white powder inside the fluorescent light bulbs. It's coat coats on the inside of it. Phosphor absorbs ultraviolet light and gives off visible light. So there's lots of uh, energy transfer here, I guess you might say. But despite the energy transfer. Fluorescent light is cool and very efficient. Well, don't forget to go back and do the questions. Hope you learned a little bit.